We all know that in Rise of Kingdoms, unless you're extremely rich, you run out of gems at some point. I'm sure you've been like, damn, I've got no gems, I can't afford to do any events. And it's definitely an issue that comes across free-to-play, low-spender players way more than someone who spends a large amount of money. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing how to get more gems, because I've made a guide on getting gems before, but to be honest, it was pretty poorly made and I was just starting off in YouTube at the time. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss an updated guide to earn yourself as a free-to-play, low spender, or even a whale, as many gems as possible. So if you want to prepare for the Herman Prime wheel, or you just want to get a ton of gems stashed up for your account, you want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's start off today's video by going over the main free to play lower spender ways of getting gems. And to be honest, there are quite a few methods. Just keep in mind, most methods are either very grindy or they don't give you that many gems at a time. But we'll just start off with the first method of getting gems as a free to play low spender. And that is just killing barbarians. Whenever you kill barbarians, especially KVK barbarians, they often will drop some amount of gems. You can see here, KVK barbs can give up to 100 gems each. And if you really want to maximize the amount of gems that you are getting as a free-to-play low spender for your action points, I recommend doing AoE barb farming. If you don't know what that is, use a commander with an area of effect damage, and you can chain barbarians at the cost of one barbarian. So you can see here, this barbarian I'm attacking right now, I did have to pay action points to do it, but my Boudicca is dropping her active skill, Zulang drops his, now I'm attacking two barbarians for the price of one. So that's what AoE barb farming is, and you can get ridiculous amounts, like 20, 30 barbarians. You can see here, I could probably chain three barbarians right now. There is like a limit though with how far they can walk and stuff, but that's a whole different thing. But for now, you do know that you can kill barbarians to get yourself extra gems, and also you can do a little bit of AoE barb farming if you have spare action points, or mainly spare time, because, because you'll run out of time before you run out of action points when you're AoE farming, because it's really, really, really time consuming but it's cheap to do. So AoE farming and barb farming in general is the first way of getting gems as a free to play low spender. Now the next method of getting gems in Rise of Kingdoms, and this is honestly probably one of the most common methods of getting gems, you see it very often. This is gem farming, farming gem deposit nodes because Lilith allows people to farm these nodes and you unlock it when you reach like City Hall 10 or 12. So a lot of people have farmed gems at some point and when you're really down bad on gems, you're gonna have to farm them. So farming gems in Rise of Kingdoms is actually a pretty good way to get gems. You can get upwards of two to 3,000 gems per day by farming gem deposits. And there's a few tips I can give you when you're doing this, because obviously anyone can say, just go throw your troops in a gem deposit and then you're gonna get gems. But the first method is when you're gathering, make sure you're using the right commanders, the right marchers, and also make sure your formations are set to the line formation. So this is just gathering speed stuff. I'm sure you've heard it before. I've mentioned it before. Keep in mind, some commanders will actually boost gem gathering, some won't. For example, some commanders don't have stuff like gem gathering. So if we go look at the gathering commanders really quickly, the commanders that will boost your gem gathering speed off the top of my head, you've got Joan of Arc, you've got Cleopatra because her skill is actually in all resources except she gets extra stone speed. You've got Sarka and you've got Centurion. They're the four commanders which will gather gems slightly quicker than the other gathering commanders. But of course, the other gathering commanders' talents will still apply to gems. Other than that though, really with gathering gem nodes, it's so simple. Just send your troops out. And when you're sending your troops out, don't just send out a march with only a load of like 30. Send out a march with like a load of 300. And what you can do is if you're really, really proactive in farming your gems, send out a march that's going to gather those gems and let it sit in the resource node. So let's say right now, this gem deposit, if I was gathering it, I let my march sit in there. And when that node finishes, I'd send my march down to this node over here because then I could claim that node with just one march and I can just keep jumping around to a bunch of resource nodes. And if you run that with five marches, you're getting like 150 gems every 30 minutes. In an hour, you're getting 300. If you do it for 10 hours, which I know most players won't, but if you do, you get a grand total of 3,000 gems a day. So you can get quite a few gems per day. Keep in mind that obviously it is definitely time consuming and not like the most fun thing to do. But if you really need a ton of gems for a Wheel of Fortune, players just grind the crap out of these resource nodes. And if you're in KVK, you can get fairly good amounts. If you're in Home Kingdom, it's a bit lower. But KVK gem deposits and farming gems properly, you will get a pretty large amount of gems. Make sure though you got gathering speed boost, you're using the right commanders, and you've got your line formation set up. The next method of getting gems, which I personally forget to do a lot of the time, is doing the Peerless Scholar and just doing these events in general. They're really, really easy to do, this like whole quiz event. 
you can Google all the answers for the preliminary event. So every single day up until like the Saturday, Sunday, you can Google every single answer. You don't even need to like actually worry about it at all. If you just get like the whole sheet, I think, with every answer for every single question. So that's really easy. Just doing the preliminary events allows you to access the midterm quiz. And this quiz allows you to get in the realm of like two to 300 gems maximum. Sometimes you get less, sometimes you get more depending on how tough it is. And the final exam, which is like the end of like the whole entire thing, and I've only ever done like one or two final exams, can give you upwards of like 1,000 gems at the most. So really these exams are an okay way to get like 1,500 pretty quick gems. And as a lower spender free to player, it's literally a free method. All you have to do is log in, do the quiz, finish the quiz, and then do the exam. So you have to log in at a certain time for the midterm and final exams. But one thing you should note is that often, especially on the Flash Discord server, he's a fellow Rise of Kingdoms YouTuber, he runs like a whole thing where he just tells everybody the answers on Discord. So if you want to do the midterm and you want to do the end of year exam, the final exam, if you join his server, I won't have it on my video, but if you join his server, you can pretty much go on there and get all the answers for the final exam and the midterm exam and pretty much guarantee yourself like 1,500 gems per every four weeks. So in total, you're going to get like a little bit less than 6,000. It's more like 4,000-ish gems. But over four weeks, that's pretty good. It's a thousand extra gems, like five extra wheel spins. Another thing you could buy with those gems. So yes, that's a good amount of gems and it's completely free. So doing the Pillar Scholar, I recommend it. And I definitely am going to start getting back on the grind because right now I'm definitely lacking with it. So I'm going to start getting back on the grind for the Pillar Scholar. Trust me, it's a really good event. It's going to give you some free gems as a lower spender free to play player. The other method which allows you to get a nice amount of gems is doing your daily objectives. Just doing them will give you 100 gems a day. And that might not sound like a lot. It's 100 gems. Why do I really care? Well, let's give an example right now. I've played for 937 days. If I logged in every single day and I got those gems, that's like 93,000 gems, some stupid number. So really, really good to try and do these quests every day. Once again, it's something I sometimes lack on, but this is, I'm usually doing these quests. Like if I'm online, I'll do like the stuff to get these quests. I'll pop a couple of boosts and boom, I now have a hundred extra gems that I didn't have before. So really easy to do this. Plus you get other nice stuff like relic coins. You get stuff like a gold key and a crystal key and there's resources and speed ups and materials along the way. So daily objectives are just good all around. But do keep in mind, they give you gems as well. So that is something you definitely should be considering when you're trying to get as many gems as possible. The next method as a free-to-play lower spender player to get gems relies on being in a bigger whale alliance. But this is, whenever people purchase bundles, there is a chance that the chests in here can give you some amount of gems. Sometimes it's like 100 or 200 gems, but it's more gems and gems are important. You can see there, I got five gems and that's better than nothing. And to be honest, I get these, maybe like 10 of these a day, it's 50 gems I wouldn't have had. So being an alliance, if you spend some money, you're going to get some amount of gems. And some of the bigger chests here can give you upwards of up to 500 gems each. So they're pretty good. And trust me, you'll be noticing you get a few thousand gems extra by being in a bigger alliance every month or so. So keep that in mind. If you're in a bigger alliance that's spending money, all these chests are going to give you gems. And if you're looking to go to a kingdom, I think that when you're looking as a free to play low spender, you want a kingdom that is spending some amount of money to give you like a nice amount of gems. I think me claiming these chests right now, I've got around 50 gems. Like right there, there's 15. And I had two tens and I had another five. There's like easily 50 or so gems there. And there's 100 gems. So you definitely get a fairly decent amount of gems by just claiming chests in your alliance. And even sometimes the auto claim chests here for like the Pillar Scholar and midterm events can also give you gems. So if your alliance members are just doing those events, you can get gems from them as well by just being in that alliance. So being in a fairly good and active alliance is going to give you large amounts of gems as well. Also do keep in mind stuff like KVK will be another way to get gems as a lower spender free to play like this. I've gotten probably like 2,000 gems so far and there's more to come. Plus all these buildings give you gems and doing barbarian forts and stuff that normally wouldn't give you gems do give you gems because of these objectives. So KVK objectives are nice way to get gems as a free to play low spender. In total, I think if you do every objective here, you get in the realm of 8,000, if not more gems. I think maybe even closer to 12,000. So yes, KVK is going to give you a lot of gems as a free to play low spender. And it's definitely something to keep an eye on. If you're in KVK, you can often spend a few more gems than if you're not in KVK because you know you're going to get a few extra gems back. The final major method as a free-to-play lower spender of getting gems are events that show up every now and again. Often, these events don't contain gems, but one of note is the Kurak Ceremony. If you're doing the Hell difficulty and you get all the way to floor 50, which is really easy to do, and you should be doing it for the gold heads, 
you get 2,000 gems. It's a really, really nice number of gems. And obviously, it's just a really easy event. Everybody does this anyway. It's a really high value event and the gems just add extra. So events that show up every now and again are going to give you gems. And there's some events that give you like 10, some give you 100. And then there's events like the Melfest, which give you up upwards of 2,000. Another event that is definitely worth mentioning though is Ark of Osiris, which also can give you a really large amount of gems. You can see here, if we look at the rewards, you get a winning rank inside the gold basically battlefield and you get and you get 10,001 score you're guaranteed 2,000 gems if you win and if you lose you get like a thousand gems which still is honestly very good so to be honest doing Ark of Osiris is just a great way to get gems and 10,000 score is really easy to do even as a new account you can actually just gather resources if you're really that losing Ark that bad and you will get the gems so really easy to get gems and even being in an alliance that's in the golden battlefield even if they lose you get 200 gems if they win you get 500 so there's a lot of gems in Ark of Osiris and obviously once again Ark is another really high value event one last event as well though that does give you gems is actually champions of Olympia I don't think it's here right now but you'll notice that the ranked awards can give upwards of 50,000 gems but you have to get rank one for that so for the most part champions of Olympia can get like two three thousand gems a season which is once again free gems that you wouldn't have had if you didn't do Olympia for me personally I hate Olympia I don't really do it but if you're doing the ranked version you can get those extra gems and people do like to push in the ranked version just to get those season gems so keep that in mind those gems definitely do add up in the long run. One last really free to play method of getting gems that most players can actually do and don't really do is getting these king gifts. The king of your kingdom often gives these gifts out every single time they refresh because it's literally just a way to give your kingdom free resources. Why wouldn't they do it? And the way you can get these gifts is really simple. A lot of kingdoms award players these trophies and these treasure chests if they are a title giver. And if you're willing to be a title giver for your kingdom and you're willing to do stuff for the kingdom, Often you can earn yourself these chests and at the higher tiers. When I used to give titles very often before I got more busy, I would usually get in most kingdoms I gave titles in an elite trophy or an epic trophy and these refresh like once a week if I'm not mistaken or once every two weeks and to be honest that's like a thousand gems or so every couple of weeks and that's a pretty good amount of gems and even then sometimes you might get a legendary trophy if you're really good for the kingdom like I know that the king of this kingdom pimped me out a little bit, he gave me a legendary trophy, mad thank you. And if I open this right now, I've now gotten 1,200 gems, which I didn't have before. I've got a ton of speed ups, a 24 hour shield, a teleport, some resources. So doing stuff that are helping your kingdom out often will result in you just getting more gems because they're going to give you those gems for helping them. So doing stuff like title giving, doing things like fighting extra in KVK or giving resources to someone that really needs it could often result in you getting a couple of gems here and there with a few extra awards. So being good to your kingdom can result in getting these gifts. And if you're close with the king, then you might also get some for free. So being an active and contributing member to your kingdom is definitely going to give you gems. And once again, thank you to the 1534 king who gave me that legendary chest. Just mad thank you. I got 1,200 free gems there. So definitely very good way to get gems is doing title giving, being close to your kingdom and helping your kingdom out. It is a great way to get those chests and often the kings notice that. You may think they don't, but if they see someone's always giving out titles, they're going to give them something in return because giving titles is a contribution from your end. And it's something that you should be doing, especially if you're farming gems, you might as well give titles at the same time while you're doing it because it's really easy to do. And if you're farming gems, you're kind of just sitting there. So give titles, you're going to get an extra 500 gems. You may as well do it. So now that we've gone over the major free to play methods of getting gems, what are the more pay to win methods that are still fairly high value? And the first major one, and this is probably the main way to get gems as a lower spender player is buying from the supply depot buying this 30-day gem supply i pretty much have this running all year round because it is really high value you pay around ten dollars us for a whole month of gems and in total it's nineteen thousand five hundred gems and for example that is close to like a hundred us dollars of gems if not a little bit it might be actually a hundred on the dot so Getting that basically supply depot is a good way to guarantee yourself a nice, large, very sturdy amount of gems. And if you have this running all year round, if you're willing to spend that money, then you're going to get, once again, a fairly good amount of gems. I think in total for the whole year, it costs you like $100, $120. So doing this 30 day gem supply is a really, really good way to get those gems. And I usually have this running all the time. And if you buy it during a recharge event, like let's say Bounding of the Ancients, or if there's a game-wide recharge event, like when the Christmas events come around, I'm almost certain there'll be a recharge event. If you buy the gem supply during that time, you're going to once again earn yourself extra stuff for the gems that you're buying. So if you buy the gem supply and 300 gems extra, 
you get like two or three gold heads and a skill reset and a teleport and some speed ups and some materials. So buying these gem spies at the right time mean gold heads, extra stuff, and then also 19,500 gems. All you have to do is log in, claim it, and then you're just set. So these gem spies are really high value and you also do get one at a half off price. Another method of getting gems, which I don't have on my account anymore, and this is probably actually the best way in the game, but it's only a one-off offer, is the growth fund. And the way the growth fund works is as you level up your city hall, you access more and more gems. So if you reach city hall 25, you just get an absolute just drop of gems on you of like 45,000. That's some ridiculous number. And the whole thing only costs like 25 US dollars. And obviously, like I said, I've bought it before. But if you haven't got the growth fund and you see it inside your shop and you need gems, it's the instant number one pickup best way to get it. So getting the growth fund, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the best value in the game. And I think every single account I've played on actively has purchased the growth fund at some point. So buy the growth fund if you really need gems. And if you already bought the growth fund, you get the supply depot just to have a very steady income and a nice stash of gems coming. Now, as for the lower value methods of getting gems, and this is moving into the more whale territory of acquiring gems, the first major one and probably the last major one is buying stuff out of the gem store besides the two things I mentioned before. This can be purchasing stuff such as bundles like the Flame of War or buying stuff that are just like normal bundles that just rock up. Like no one's ever going to buy a Gathering of Heroes and expect to get good value for it because you might as well pretty much just buy them out of the gem store. That's how low the value is. And even buying stuff like the super value bundles, unless you're a bigger spender, are not very good value. So buying stuff out of the store, unless you're buying the right things, are not good value. The only things that the only things that are pretty okay are King's Coronation. This has some pretty good value in it. Mountain Warfare, if you need crystals for KPK. And then also, I don't mind the armament ones because armaments are giving you other stuff that are really important. So overall, most of the super value bundles are fairly low value. And if you're looking for just pure gems, you're better off buying the Supply Depot and just being patient because it's much higher value. And then also buying, like I said, the Growth Fund before. It is important to note though, sometimes events do come around where if you buy the Season Bundle, the items for that event will eventually get transferred into gems. And in those situations, you can get like upwards of double gems per bundle you buy. And in those situations, it is worth it because you're getting speed ups, resources, VIP, and then like 25,000 gems for a bundle that should only give you 12,000. So sometimes those bundles will show up and often there'll be a video about it, but make it, make sure you're looking at the special item the bundle is giving you and seeing if it converts to gems at the end of an event, because that is definitely going to be a higher value bundle than something that doesn't convert to gems at the end. Because like I said, those can give you double gems, pretty much like buying out of the gem store for the first time. And then also on top of that, give you speed ups, resources, and VIP. Those bundles are worth it, but they're very far and few between. And nowadays, Lilith doesn't really make those bundles. They more just make normal lower value bundles for the whales really only to buy. So now that I've discussed all the methods of purchasing gems in Rise of Kingdoms, to my knowledge, did I miss anything kind of major that you guys are thinking, how the heck did he miss that? And if you think I missed a method of getting gems or you have a secret to share with the community, let us know in the comments. How do you get your gems really quickly? Is there something I missed out on? Is there a secret way I don't know of? Let me know in the comments. I read every comment, I respond to every comment, and I find them all interesting. Often people point out methods where I just completely missed it. I was like, oh, that's just an amazing way to get gems or something I completely missed. Like for example, in my blueprint video, I forgot to mention that Alliance Mobilization gives you a fairly good amount of blueprints. You can see here there's fragments everywhere throughout all these rewards, and I just fully missed it. So let me know in the comments down below if I missed anything, any form of getting gems that you find is high value as a lower spender free to play. And if you just enjoyed the video, you have something to say about maybe you use the exact method I mentioned, let me know in the comments because I am also interested to see if any of the methods I mentioned are really used by the community. So let me know in the comments down below. I read them all, I heart them, and I respond to every single one. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.